What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. We are here day one for us, really full day one, Saturday of Daytona Bike Week 22. And uh, very excited for what's going on today. Yeah, are definitely, you? we I think. can see it behind us actually. Finally getting rid of this stock suspension. So excited, man. We're here at the Olean's tent and uh, we're both getting it done. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm getting rears, you're getting... I'm getting fronts and rears. Yeah, and uh, super excited, ready to get off this crap suspension. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I know Stacy can't wait, you oh, can't yeah. wait. <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, stock Harley suspension is rough. Yeah. And uh, my, my, expectation, my expectations for this are, are really high. Absolutely. So, it's, so uh, we're going to hang out here, probably film a little bit here as they yep. do the work. And then uh, we've got some other stuff to do today. Yep. So. Like I said, I couldn't be more excited and let's watch them put these suspensions on the bike. All right. So what's up everybody? I'm here with Mike from Olean's. Mike Hensley. Yep. What's happening, Mike? And uh, tell us a little bit about what we're putting on the 21 Road Glide today. So we're getting ready to put the hose mounted reservoir shocks that we've got. Um, they're becoming very popular in the last uh, two years. It seems like that our inventory, we're having to just double um, to prepare for the year. But we're gonna do the hose mounted reservoirs. They've got, um, they're fully adjustable. It's got compression, rebound length, um, and it comes with a billet tool to adjust your preload. So we're gonna make sure that during this install that we cover um, all of the setup information that you guys are gonna need. Because we get asked that a lot, and it's important that we understand how to do a proper setup. Up. Even top notch suspension is not going to feel good if it's not set up properly. So that's going to be our goal today. All right. All right, let's get these things out of the box. Power ID on these shocks are 14 millimeter. Harley Davidson always uses half inch bolts, so we, that's what these reducer sleeves are for. Okay. If you're lowering the shocks and they're not on the bike, like I'm getting ready to do, it's very simple. If you're lowering the shocks and they're on the bike, the way it's designed is you've got a 19 millimeter that you break the blue nut loose, and then you put a 17 millimeter on the on the part just above it, and it'll absorb the end eye. And then you take the blue nut and just snug it back down. Now, if you're doing the opposite, if you're extending, probably a good practice for us just to show this. <clears throat> because this is a safety feature. If you spin that down, now if it's on the bike, you can't do this. That's why it's different than um, Procedure is different if you're raising or lower and it's on the bike. And I'm going the wrong way. I wanted to show you the safety ring that's on the um, that's on the end eye. Okay, zoom in there. See if you can see that safety ring that's on the threads. So that safety ring, where it needs to be, the full, the highest you can go is if you spin this up and it's uh, just snugged up against the bottom. Let me see if I can grab something to point. If it's snugged up just against the bottom of the blue nut right there, you're fine. If you come up enough to where it's pulling away when the blue nut is snugged down, it's too far. So the shocks can come apart. It's a safety feature that you must follow if you're trying to raise the bike. So how much travel do these, do these have? How much adjustment? Um, the travel is three and a half inches. Okay. So your stock shocks, most stock shocks have about two and three quarter. So just by going with this type of shock, you're gonna gain three quarters of an inch travel. Sleep. 
get it to the half inch bolts that Harley uses because our ID is 14 millimeters. So now we're going to talk about a little bit about the bracket that holds the reservoir, right, for yes. the uh, suspension. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we, what we're doing is we've modified, we've made a new bracket that will give you a remote uh, location like the Screaming Eagle shocks, and we're going to start adding it into the HDO 44. Now I'm not sure we're going to have it done by the time this video releases, but we're working toward it. So um, I just wanted to clarify that when you open your your kit. This is the components that's normally in there. So these are going to be designed if you wanted your reservoirs hidden behind the bags or behind the fender filter. So the new brackets that we have are going to pull the reservoirs out. They're black billet um, and they're going to work with the existing um, reservoir clamp that is in there. So it basically just mounts together um, and it'll have a hose clamp that pulls it out. We've checked and uh, this will work with any of the Harley attachments, any of the current configurations. Uh, whether it's got a detachable bag, um, a detachable tour pack, it all it, it works with all of them. We're using the last two bolts back here, right underneath the tour pack. So, all the short um, bolts in here, you're going to pull those out and use them. They're going to work with clamping uh, the small bracket to the bottom of the reservoir clamp. And then the only other bolts out of this kit that you're going to use is the tapered one, and that is the reservoir clamp itself. So that goes. Uh, that goes right in there. These are all bolts that come with the existing mounting yes. kit that you guys have. Yes, now. these four small bolts here and these two right here, that's currently what's in the kit that you're going to have to pull out and use with the new reservoir bracket. So, one thing I wanted to point out is um, this bracket, the way it works is it's got, <clears throat> it clamps together basically like that, holding the reservoir up here. It's going to use these two bolt holes right here. But what we've learned is there's um, what you need to do is pre-build this entire thing, slide the reservoir into the clamp, and then bolt it to the bike. You can't bolt it everything on here and then have enough flexibility in your hose to get the reservoir in. So you're going to have to pre-build all of this, slide the reservoir in, and then bolt it onto the bike. Honestly, it's tips like that from a manufacturer when you're installing this from at home is going to make a world of difference and probably save you a ton of frustration and time. So, great point we picked up here at the Olean's tent. If it's a 2014 or newer, this is the two bolts that you're going to need. The one side only has countersunk, and that's to go into this one because we need it flush mounted once these are, once these are in. The next part is to mount this on. Now what we're doing is we're putting the clamp on the inside so that you don't see the clamp nut on the outside if you're looking from the outside. So spin it around to where um, that your clamp nut is on the inside. Okay, so now we're ready to get the reservoir um, into the reservoir clamp. You're gonna do that before you go to put the two bolts in because you won't have the flexibility to put it in after the bolt, the, those bolts are in. You're going to adjust um, the location of the sticker on the back once you've got everything mounted down. you got one longer spacer because on the back side you'll see that it's, it's deeper for the offset.
next is to get our reservoir where we want. Uh, looking at the side view right here, you'll see that there's a shoulder that starts here. Same thing on this side. You'll see a shoulder that starts here. You want your reservoir clamp right in the center of that. Once you've got it centered, you want to look at it from the back side of the bike and make sure that you've got your sticker location straight. So this is a view you guys don't always get to see. We are inside the Olean's rig here at Destination Daytona. So. One of the things that we did um, to kind of make it easier, if we're working inside now, because we're having to do spring swabs and set up, part of the setup is in here. We did a see-through shield here that you can't see from the outside. If you're to the outside, even if you're right up on it, you can't see what's going on in here, but we can tell if a customer comes up. So we're, we're ready and we've got four guys working and sometimes all four of us might end up in here and we don't want someone to walk away without help. So it's pretty cool. And I'll show you what that looks like from the outside. And the uh, reason we're in here is we're going to go a little bit over the setup of the suspension. Right? Yeah, Specifically one of the, the important rears. things that we want to cover is the uh, digital spring calculator. Uh, our engineers designed the way that uh, you can just key in your information into this calculator. Uh, it will tell you exactly where to put your preload collar without having to do a sag measurement. This is one of the big things that's um, even with good suspension, if it's not set up properly, it can perform poorly. So we wanted to try to simplify as much as the setup as we could. We figured that would help expand the product line. So um, that being said, we're going to go to Olin's USA as soon as I get on the internet here and we'll show you how to navigate through the website to set your um, preload and then we're going to cover all the other setups as well. Okay, so I've got Olin's USA pulled up. This is your home page. Now, the next step uh, in setting up your product is to go to product search. Now, we just installed HD 044 on your bike, so you type in HD space 044, and you'll see it pop up. And once we get on the landing page for 044, it's got a header that has an overview, your paragraph overview. It's got images right here, high resolution uh, images. It's got um, a video that we made several years ago explaining the differences between the three different level shocks that we offered. Uh, if you click take points it jumps down to all these bullet points that go over the uh, product the different features. And then one, here's the key important factor that everybody is using. This setup calculator, the engineers made it so that you could go down to this setup calculator, pick the bike that you had, if you've got an Ultra, um, does it have a tour pack? Yes. What's your primary use? It gives you solo, so um, no luggage, with luggage, two up, no luggage, two up with luggage. So what was yours? Solo with luggage we're going to go for. Okay. So um, we're just going to use an example. Of, say you got a ride that's 250. Um, now even though your primary use is solo with luggage, there's, there's t times that you're going to have a passenger on there, maybe. So let's just give the example. Say they're 150 pounds that you carry you know, 25 pounds uh, in your saddlebags. See, it's got saddlebags and it's also got the weight in your tour pack separated because that has a different leverage ratio on the shocks if you're putting something in the tour pack in comparison to the saddlebag. So we've separated it out because this is very important to have the weight balance set up properly. So tour packs have a maximum weight of 25 pounds. A lot of people will go way over that, but just for an example, let's say we've got 25 pounds in that tour pack. One important step is is even though the shocks may be brand new, we want you to click return and setup. And what that does is you'll see that it drops down, select your current spring. If you hit the drop down box, you need to look at the springs that's exactly, that's installed on your bike 
pick that particular spring, and then you hit calculate. So um, it may have been that uh, you know that when you first looked at it, the calculator said a certain spring, but um, you know after talking to the technicians, they decided you needed a 28. That's why we want you to click return and setup, pick the spring that's installed. Once you hit calculate, it's going to spit out some data. Now this spring position um, is very important. This is what we're talking about. So you've got a solo. It, it'll highlight your um, primary use in yellow, but it'll give you the measurements for all four scenarios, solo, with luggage, two up, and then two up with luggage. Now, this measurement that it's talking about is the distance between the top of the preload collar and the bottom of the cylinder head. Now, we're not talking about where the threads start. We're talking about from the bottom of the cylinder head to the top of the preload collar, and that is in millimeters. So, for example, if I was gonna set the bike up for me solo, um, with luggage, I would move that spring position from there six millimeters down. So I, this collar would need to come up to about six millimeters down, and that would be my solo with luggage. Now, when the wife gets on, that needs to move ten more millimeters. It needs to move ten more millimeters down uh, the body so that this becomes sixteen millimeters, and that's your two up setting. That's the only way that you. That's what you change when you're changing weight. The preload that comes with the billet tool. Um, we provide this billet tool. It's got holes all the way around. When you're making preload changes, make sure that you get it all the way in. If you, if you only get it halfway in and you start cranking on that, it'll wallow those holes out and damage it. So you wanna make sure that you get the preload tool all the way in. It makes it very easy to make preload changes. Um, and what we also do, it has a nylon set screw. Just back that out, uh, make your change, and snug it back down. Now, it doesn't. we've tested with this in, with it out, it's not gonna change, even if that was to fall out. Um, but it is just a, a second way, a security to be able to snug it down and make sure that your preload doesn't move. Now we also use this as an indicator of how many turns you've made. Sometimes on the fly we've seen people, and this happens a lot, and, and it's because it works, that um, you could add one turn of preload for every 25 pounds. So say that the passenger is 150 pounds, um, he knows that he could go from a, a solo uh, to a two up setting just by adding six turns. So he would just count at that point. So have the nylon set screw on the outside, fully around, one turn, nylons on the outside. When it gets six turns down, you compress the spring for more weight, you take tension off the spring for less weight. Okay, so going over the other features, we just talked about the preload, and the preload is, um, it's very important, obviously, a primary change if you're gonna change weight on the bike. So if weight changes, you change this adjustment. The rebound adjuster is the knob at the bottom, and. Uh, it is basically your comfort control. This is your slow shaft speed adjustment. It has to do with what, what kind of feel you're looking for. Now, the knob turns, if you turn it to the right, if you turn the face of the knob to the right, this is closing the bleed. It's restricting flow inside the shock, and it'll slow everything down. If you, if you hit a bump and you feel like the bike is moving too much, you would close the bleeds down. Now, we're going to tell you the starting position and show you how to get there, but it's important to understand, you know, when you hit something, if it feels like it moves too much, you close the bleed down. If it feels like that it's not moving enough and you expect it a little bit more of a plush feel, you open the bleeds up. They're very effective. If you get, if you closed it all the way down, the shock would barely move. If you open it all the way up, it could feel like it's bouncing on a spring. Neither one of those are comfortable. The comfort is somewhere in the middle of the range, and our middle of the range on the hose mounted reservoir shocks is 14 for rebound, 14 for compression. So let's say that you just get lost. You've turned it, you have no idea where you're at. The goal is to turn it to the right until it comes to a full stop, and it will. If you're going the right direction, it'll come to a full stop. If you're going the wrong direction, it'll stop clicking and start spinning. So we've went fully closed, and now we're gonna count out 14 clicks. So 14 clicks out is the middle of the range. We feel that this is a good balance of uh, comfort and the ability to control the motorcycle if you're riding aggressive. Um, the other adjustment, we've already adjusted your length adjustment all the way to the bottom. It has 10 millimeters of adjustment up or down. It's right in the middle of that. If you go all the way down, it's about 12 and a 7 8 inch shock, but because these have so much travel, you can make the seat height feel like a 12 and a half. So it's not like a full 13 if you're trying to get your feet down. Um, so this is your rebound adjuster, length adjustment, and the, the last adjustment that's out here that is exposed is your compression adjustment. Now, unfortunately, this is the last adjustment that you're gonna make. Um, and it's the easiest to get to, and it's just the nature of this, this design. So 
your compression adjustment, if you've got the rebound set where you feel like that the comfort is good, but every once in a while you hit that bridge or pothole or something and it bottoms out. It's not typical on these shocks. They have a lot of travel and they have very good internals and hydraulics, but if you feel like that, you, um, that it bottoms out every once in a while and you don't like it, but you like the movement, you can take the compression and close it two clicks or maybe four clicks. Our suggested range is um, no further than six clicks away from the starting position. So uh, aggressive guys may end up down at um, you know 12 or 10 or possibly even eight clicks out. That's getting pretty extreme. You don't run in the two clicks to four clicks out, or you don't open it up to you know 30 clicks out. It's just not going to perform well there. So um, to reiterate, good suspension will work really well if it's set up. The setup is critical. So. We, now we're going to set your preload to what we calculated in there. The rebound is also set. We're going to double check that all the clickers are 14, 14, and whatever the, the uh, spring calculator uh, provided us when we put in your information is where we're going to change this to. Then you should be good to go. All right, guys, so that's the video. We just wanted to wrap it up. We're home from Daytona, but wanted to let you know, obviously, we had the Oleans installed. We both had the rear Oleans installed. The video for the front will be in the playlist um, as soon as it comes out. And I couldn't be happier so far. We're going to do a review. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, bookmark this video. So, you know, if you have any questions about setting it up, like this is the right way to set up your suspension. And like Mike said numerous times in the video, it doesn't matter how nice of a suspension you have or how, how high quality of a suspension you have. If it's not set up right, it's not going to perform right. You know? Initial thoughts, we've rode it home from Daytona, 1,000 miles. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Again, I've said this before on other things. I haven't tried other suspensions. Uh, I, I can't sit here and say it's the best one out there. I have no idea because I haven't tried them all, but holy crap, if you're coming from stock suspension to these old leans. Yeah. It's, it's a dream. It's, it's a night and day difference. It's, a, it's an instant difference you notice right away just obviously on the basic bumps but also handling in corners yeah. you know on the curves um, and man on the highway man you just glide over those, all those those transitions those transitions from concrete from the, to blacktop and some of those bridges, on those bridges nice. you just i mean they used to hurt yeah. on the stock and you don't even feel them now and i i only have the rears obviously mm -hmm. um but still it's, a big it's difference. still an, a, just an amazing difference and like we've we've already stated probably on a live that it is the first thing you should have done. Forget mm -hmm. the pipes, forget the handlebars. Do your if you're suspension. buying a stock, new Harley, do your suspension do your first. Suspension. Absolutely. So. so, all right, listen, thanks for watching this video. Like I said, look out for the front install video. There's a lot of tips and tricks that are gonna be in that one. Um, just like, you know, some of the tips you saw in this one that are from the manufacturer, so stuff that you wouldn't see otherwise. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you like this content, ring that bell, and we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, later. See ya.